Hi there. Welcome to my exam AZ900 Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Online Study Guide. This is episode 61 entitled Blob Storage Access Tiers. My name's Tim Warner. In the AZ900 objective domain, today's skill starts in the section called Describe Core Azure Services, then goes through Describe Core Resources Available in Azure, and specifically our skill is Describe the Benefits and Usage of Blob Storage and Storage Tiers. If you go to timw.info slash az900sg, you can see an interactive table of contents for this entire guide. Let's get started. We have in Azure the storage account, which we've learned about elsewhere in the study guide. So let's just jump right into what storage access tiers are. There's three of them to choose from, and they affect only the blob service of your storage account. In other words, your unstructured file data. The hot access tier is going to give you higher storage costs, but lower access costs. You have to remember that Azure storage account pricing is a little bit complicated. You're charged not only for the amount of space in Microsoft's cloud you're occupying, but also every time you interact with the storage account, even if it's just doing a listing of a container, those are transactions that do cost money. Hot access is for data that is going to be volatile, data that you'll regularly be using. The cool access tier you can choose to do just the opposite is hot. For data that is relatively non-volatile, where you won't be using it all that much, here you get lower storage costs, but higher access costs. You see, so really the main choice behind choosing a storage access tier for your blob service containers is your degree of access and where you'd like to get a price discount. There's a third option called archive. This gives you much lower storage costs, but at an expense if you want to unarchive data within 180 days. Because hot and cool, you can always change the access tier. In fact, I'll show you how to do that in a moment in the demo, and you can still access those blob files. But when you put a file or a blob in archive, it actually makes the blob inaccessible until you rehydrate it. So you'll only want to use the archive tier for data that you truly don't intend to touch for at least 180 days. Lifecycle management policy is a newer feature in Azure Blob Storage that can help us corral lots of blobs. Specifically, you can transition blob access tiers at scale. You certainly don't want to be doing this kind of operation on a blob-by-blob -blob basis. You might have many containers containing many hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of blobs. You can do things like deleting blobs, blob versions, snapshot backups to save space when they reach a certain length. The transitioning, as you'll see in our demo, are things like if a blob hasn't been accessed in the last n number of days, transition it automatically from hot to cool. It's that kind of thing. These rules are run by Azure once per day at the storage account level. Let's get into the demo and I'll show you how it works. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to kick the tires a little bit in terms of setting access policy for storage account blobs. Here we are in the Azure portal and the storage accounts blade, and let's go into my Tim Storage 001. What I'm going to show you, the access tiering applies to the general purpose V2 and blob storage types of Azure storage accounts. You can't do the tiering with a V1 general purpose account. I always recommend stay with general purpose V2 as a general rule. First, we can set our default access tier for the blob service. Let's search the settings for config. And if we go to the configuration settings, we've got blob access tier default. And this is going to be the tier that's inferred automatically on all new blobs that you add to your container service. Speaking of which, next, let's come down in our settings down to the blob service and let's view our containers list. I have a container called scripts that contains a whole bunch of PowerShell script files. Notice that the access tier column is showing hot inferred. That inferred means that the access tier is coming from the default that I set at the service level. But we can change the access tier by selecting one or more blobs. And you can use change tier up here on the toolbar, or you can open up the ellipsis menu and go to change tier. Now, if we switch from hot to cool, as I said, that's fine. It's going to immediately change how that blob is being priced but we'll still be able to do anything we want with it. For instance, I can come into the blob properties. I can download the blob, et cetera, et cetera. I can reset the tier to something else. That's a different story. So for the second PS1 file, why don't I open the ellipsis and let's go to change tier. And this time, why don't I set it to archive? 
Notice that we get a warning that says that setting this blob to archive makes the blob inaccessible unless it's rehydrated back to hot or cool, which could take several hours. Let's click Save. And we now see that my ARM deployment PS1 is in the archive access tier. And if we look at the file's properties, notice that the download operation is not available. To rehydrate an archive tier blob, we just simply change the tier again, taking it out of archive and bringing it back to either hot or cool. Now remember, we're going to be subject to a penalty, a cost penalty, because I'm doing this inside of that 180-day window. And because the service level agreement, or SLA from Microsoft, is that this could take several hours, you can actually pay a little extra yet to do an elevated rehydrate priority, as you can see here. I'm just going to set mine to standard. But that's the long and the short of moving your blobs. Now, of course, how would you do this on a big level. If you wanted to change the access tier of many, many blobs and containers, then that would be a great case for using automation like Azure PowerShell or Azure CLI. That's what I would recommend. To finish out this demo, let me come and show you the lifecycle management. In the storage account, let me search for lifecycle. And if we come down to lifecycle management, we can create one or more of these policies. Let's click add a rule and I'll call this test lifecycle policy. Looks like it didn't like the spaces. How about if I do this? Test policy with no spaces. Did that work? Yep, that's okay. And the rule scope applies to all of your blobs by default, but chances are you're going to want to write filters to customize the blobs that are affected by your rules. And notice that you can affect block or append blobs. It gets beyond the scope of AZ900, but block blobs is what your file data is represented as. Append blobs is used for log files that have new data written to them directly. There's a third kind of blob called a page blob that's used for virtual machine disk storage. And you also can select base, snapshot, or versioned blobs as well. Again, we talk about that elsewhere in the study guide. Let's click Next. And here's the UI here. We can create one or more of these if-then blocks such that if the base blobs were last modified more than however many days ago, then what do you want to do? Do you want to transition to cool because it's assuming hot? Do you want to move to archive or do you want to delete the blob? Now the deletion, be careful. You can protect your blob service in Azure storage accounts with soft delete. But deletion can be powerful because you may not want base blobs. You may not want snapshots or versions. After a certain amount of time, you just might want to clean up that because you are paying for your disk storage footprint, you see. Let me choose move to cool storage. So you would just create however many of these if-then blocks that you want to write. And then next, if you decided to do filters, you can create either a expression, like maybe we just wanted to affect the scripts container, or we wanted to affect all the scripts container files that start with VM. I think you can use a star to represent an asterisk, but to that level, it's beyond what we need for AZ900. I would check the docs to figure that out exactly. But you see what we've got going on here? You're filtering by creating these prefix match expressions or key value pair evaluations to include those in your management policy. So now I've got my test policy and it's going to run once a day. I want to clean up my environment, so I'm going to delete my lifecycle management policy. And there you have it. For further learning, you can walk through a pretty nice tutorial at Microsoft Learn called Explore Azure Storage Services, timw.info slash BAT1. That goes beyond the blob service and also touches on table queue and file services as well. A link to the blob access tier documentation is timw.info slash BAT2. If you want to get to the docs on the lifecycle management, that would be timw.info slash BAT3. Thanks so much, as always, for joining me. The next episode is called Azure Region Pairs. I look forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, you can find me on Twitter at Tech Trainer Tim. All of my Pluralsight courses are at timw.info ps, and my personal website is techtrainertim.com. Happy studying.